Do you have between 25 and 50-ish pounds for a brand new gaming mouse? Well, this video should help you out. If you can't guess by the large array of gaming mice I have next to me, this video is going to be covering them and kind of where you should put your money if you're interested in a, ter a certain type of experience or if you have, a, say, a feature set you need or anything in between. So let's start off on the budget side of things, the 20 to 30-ish pound price range. In this bracket, at least from the ones we have on the table, we have the new Coolmaster CM310, we also have the Cougar Surpassion, and we have the Thermotech Iris. All of these mice are pretty decent at their job. Uh, some of them have a few extra features, some of them don't, so let's take a look. Now, because mice are a very much personal preference topic, I'm going to be covering both the facts of the mice and my opinion and experience in using them, so bear that in mind if you are planning on picking any of these up. With that in mind, the CM310 is one of the nicest quality cheap mice available. Its sensor, I believe, is the PMW3325, which is fairly standard across the budget mice, uh, tracks pretty well and has a good DPI range, and is also, as I said, a little bit more premium with rubber side grips. With that said though, the Cougar Surpassion is actually uh, even better quality, I might add. It's a couple pounds more, has a very similar sensor, goes up to 7,200 DPI, tracks very well, and overall is just a really impressive mouse. The other thing to mention is that this one's unique selling point, if you like, is the display on the bottom. It has a sort of e-ink display that lets you change the polling rate and the DPI very easily just with uh, two buttons that are on the bottom. And while this isn't going to be, you know, your hot swap DPI changing, unlike the CM310, this one obviously gives you a very discreet feedback as to which DPI setting you're on, which means you don't have to memorize the color combinations like you do on the CM310. The Thermaltake Iris is a nice mouse, does feel a little bit cheaper than the other two, and it seems like availability is a bit mixed at the moment, so just keep that in mind and I'd probably overall recommend either the Surpassion or the CM310 over the Iris in general. So in this, the budget category, which mouse do I recommend? Well, that hands down goes to the Cougar Surpassion. It is a great Vive money. I highly recommend it. And it's overall, as I said, great sensor, tracks well, great overall build quality. The display on the bottom is nice and pretty useful at times and overall just a very nice ergonomic feel to the mouse. If you wanted a slightly more ambidextrous style than the CM310, is a nice option as well though. Now because of the tightness of this price category overall, I've basically split these into the budget mice, which we've just talked about, and the sort of mid-range mice, which we're going to cover now. That includes anything from the Zowie FK1 to the Razer Death Adder, in this case the Chroma, although there are a few versions which cost varying amounts, so bear that in mind. Um, also things like the Dream Machine's DM1 Pro S, uh, the SteelSeries Rival 310, and while I do have the G703 on the desk here which actually has support for power play which is actually a really cool thing but puts it slightly out of this price range i wanted to have it here just to give you a bit of a nod to logitech mice and also to the G403 wired. Let's start with that one actually. The G403 wired, well, obviously is very similar to the 703. It's a little bit lighter since there's no batteries inside, but holds the same shape and overall design. Also a great sensor, tracks very well. And I think, especially if you're in the FPS side of things, you're gonna enjoy the overall shape. And obviously ergonomically, it is a pretty nice style too. The Death Adder is a pretty nice option as well. As I said, it does come in a variety of price points. So the Elite versus the Chroma versus the standard Death Adder. Adder. They're slightly different shapes, so just bear that one in mind. But this one, the Chroma, is a great overall shape, has a great 10,000 DPI sensor, and as I said, as with all of these mice, really, it tracks pretty well, and I think you'll be pretty happy with it, especially for more FPS applications. The Zowie FK1 and the Dream Machines DM1 Pro S are pretty similar, so I'm kind of putting them together here. These are pretty basic gaming mice in terms of sort of thrills and thrills functionality, but uh, they do well. They are obviously pro kind of level mice and do track incredibly well very accurate accurately with very little acceleration so if you are a more pro player who doesn't care for styling and just wants the best tracking mouse generally speaking at least uh, to to the pros anyway uh, then those might be for you and finally the steel series rival 310 this one is one that i've had on my desk for a good number of months and i've only swapped to the razor naga trinity for that one's extra button functionality but this one at least in terms of of FPS gaming mice is excellent. I really, it is my favorite mouse on this desk by a good margin and is one of my favorite mice overall in general. The sensor is a True Move 3, tracks very well and is again similar to even the, the FK1 and the DM1 Pro 
tires. Uh, again, very little acceler acceleration and, and overall things like lift off distance is uh, decent as well. You can also customize a lot of this in the SteelSeries engine software, which is also pretty impressive to see and something that a lot of these mice don't have access to. Obviously, the Razer Death Adder does have their Synapse software available, but I feel like the SteelSeries engine is often a little bit easier to use and a little bit more, uh, I guess, just user-friendly and feature-rich at times, so that's nice to see. Build quality in that one is very nice. It's a pretty light mouse as well, which is good for the, again, FPS style. And overall, uh, the build quality is also really nice with massive rubber grips along either side, which makes it plenty easy to pick up. And the side buttons are well uh, sort of secured as well as uh, just a decent size. So in this, the mid-range category, which mouse would I recommend? Well, if you've heard me talking for the last two minutes, you probably know that it's the SteelSeries Rival 310. It is my personal favorite. Uh, for me, at least it tracks the, the best. It's also the best weight distribution and overall weight. It's got a great build quality and the SteelSeries engine allows for some customizability that a lot of the other ones don't have or make a lot more difficult to access. Overall, all of these mice are still great though, and obviously uh, with mice in itself, it comes down to personal preference, especially on things like your hand size and how you hold a mouse. So for me, I am so mostly palm, although slightly hybrid grip, um, but uh, you know that's, that's my personal preference, so yours may vary. Another thing to note is that most of these mice are considered FPS gaming mice, obviously with their two button configurations as opposed to the more MMO style multi-configuration, uh, multi-button configuration mice. Um, so things like the Razer Naga, or Razenaga Trinity and the Corsair Scimitar. I wanted to include those, but they just don't fit in this price bracket and I don't have a standard Naga. So um, that's uh, just to bear in mind if you are looking at more MMO styled mice, those are some options that you have, although not necessarily in this price range. But anyway, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What's your current daily driver mouse? Uh, is there any mice on here or anywhere else that you've seen that you just are desperate to get your hands on? Let me know in those comments down below. If you want to know any more about the mice, I'll leave a link or a card up above uh, that you can check out each one of the individual reviews for them. And if you want to pick one up or check out pricing for any of them when and where you watch this, I'll leave links to all of them in the description down below as well. I'll also leave links to Amazon and Overclockers UK if you want to support the channel and the uh, Patreon link where you can support me directly or there's plenty of other stuff like merch down there too. You can also check out the other videos over here and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and otherwise, as I said, we will see you all in the next video.